Some people have as much of an impact in their death as they do in their lives. Medgar Evers, however, is someone who is profoundly influential in both. He serves as an example of how much a person can achieve and also a tragic story of a great life cut short. Growing up in Mississippi during the Great Depression, Evers was one of five children. He attended segregated schools and served in World War II, where he participated in D-Day, one of the most important battles of the entire war. For many people, this would be enough to fill a fascinating biography, but for Evers, it was just the beginning. After returning home from the war, he went to college and got married. His life looked like the example of what most Americans aspire to. But Evers was not content to live a simple domestic life. He began organizing people in his community in the early 1950s with local boycotts and civil actions. When the Supreme Court struck down legalized segregation in 1954, Eggers decided to move from the community to the courtroom. He applied at the University of Mississippi's law school, knowing that his application was certain to be denied because of his race. When that happened, he began working with the local chapter of the NAACP, helping them to organize larger boycotts and enroll more members into the group. Evers was prolific and effective, playing a part in demonstrations to open public beaches and parks, fairs and schools. He also urged other people to take a voice in government by leading voter registration drives. Sadly, this made Evers the target of violence by white supremacist groups, such as the White Citizens Council and the Ku Klux Klan. He was forced to prepare his children for what they should do if they heard the sounds of gunfire, and by the early 60s, several attempts had already been made on his life. Sadly, Evers' luck ended on June 12, 1963, when he was assassinated by a white supremacist named Byron de la Beckwith, right as he arrived home. Beckwith shot Evers in the back with a rifle. At the time of his death, Evers was 37 years old. However, if Beckwith and the racist groups he belonged to hoped that killing Evers would stifle what he'd worked to accomplish, they were mistaken. His death inspired people across the world and drew more attention to the growing movement for civil rights. His widow, Merle Evers Williams, became a powerful figure herself. As for the man who shot Evers, he was put on trial three times, twice in the 60s with juries unable to come to a verdict, and again in 1994 when he was finally found guilty. He spent the rest of his life in prison. Evers, while his life was tragically cut short, managed to do a profound amount of good while he was here. A family man, a veteran of World War II, a civil rights pioneer, he was an inspiring individual. Even now, he is a powerful example of how good, motivated people really can make the world a better place.